And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are so, so happy that you have joined us for tonight's preview show. Literally, we are celebrating a celestial event from the heavens for tomorrow, and we are going to preview that tonight, let you know what we're going to be doing. My name is Adrian Mizer. I'm going to be your host, and I am a proud parent, longtime parent of many students here at Burton Adventist Academy. The last of my eight that I've put through here is uh, finishing up, winding his way down. And my co-host, I'm glad to be bringing in Mr. Reggie Herman. And Reggie, tell everybody about yourself. But among other things, you are an alumnus of this esteemed institution. But, but I think we need to stop just real quick. Okay. You said eight? Eight, eight students. Eight. Three of them have been mine. Okay. Three of them have been mine. Five have been foreign exchange students who I've been pleased okay, to have but still, in my house. But yes. still, I'm going to say you have a full set of hair and it's not gray. I don't see one <laughs> strand of gray hair. That's pretty amazing. So, yes, I'm glad to be sitting next to you. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you this is the incarnate of Bob Barker. This, this man is talented, and I'm just here to be the wind beneath his wings tonight. That's what I'm doing for you. But now, you did ask me to introduce myself, and I will do that. So you are correct. I'm the class of 1995. I actually started going to Burton in 1983. Oh my goodness. When Kelly Elliott was only a two lane road, asphalt oh, wow. road. No, nothing was really out here. And the only thing that was on campus was just the cinder block school, which is where the elementary stands today. That is incredible. That's how much has changed. Now, in addition to that, my family's had two generations go through th these hallways and walked off the stage with a diploma here from Burton Adventist Academy. That so a lot amazing. of connection here. I'm glad you're here. I love the fact that you're wearing Burton blue, which looks got way it. better than CTA blue, <laughs> but we'll just leave it at that. But it's great that you're here, and I'm glad to be sitting next to you and running shotgun. Well, I am glad to be here as well. Thank you. Thank you, Reggie. This tomorrow is going to truly be in a once-in-a-lifetime event. That is not hyperbole. The last time that a full solar eclipse happened, a total solar eclipse happened in this area, 18, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, that is not a misprint, 18. 1978. I'm told that something called a Rutherford B. Hayes was president of the United States back then. Well, and it was July 29th, 1878. So, wow. I mean, we go way back here, and that's what's great. I bet Kelly Elliott wasn't even a two-lane road at that time. No, no. It was just a bunch of post oak trees that were standing here on this very property. So, no, it's, it's great that you highlight the fact this is such a great event. Yeah, and it's not going to be happening again in the United States anywhere for at least a couple of decades, and even then, way up north in Montana and North Dakota, and it won't be happening here until when again? Well, so some models and some calculations, and that's what's great about the solar eclipse, is you can really use some great math to calculate this. Yep. So we're looking at June the 30th, 2345. And so for you Trekkies out there, that is actually when Jean-Luc Picard is taking the Enterprise through the universe, that's how far out in the future we're talking about when this next time happens. Wow, wow. You weren't ready so, for that. No, I was not. So we are so glad you have joined us and we are here at the newly christened. Tell everybody about the, the station moniker that we are going to be using. It's Blast. Blast. We're going to have Burton a Blast. live stream. It's Blast. And we are going to have a Blast. Because let me just say this. You don't need to go to CNN. No. You don't need to go to Fox. You don't need to go to Channel 5. Turn them Those off. are all fake news. We're going to come here. <laughs> we're going to unlock knowledge and we're going to unleash fun. That's what we're going to do here on this YouTube channel. You got it. Glad to be joined at Blast here on the campus of Burton Adventist Academy. And let me say a little bit more about that. We are so pleased for all of the effort that Burton Academy has put into this and highlighting this event, both for the learning aspect of it and the fun aspect. So Burton is a high-quality, top education private school. Again, I've put many children through here. You have long roots here. So we can speak to that from personal experience. We're located right off of I-20 in Arlington, Texas. So it's very convenient to get here. And I think we're going to be showing contact information and location perhaps. Uh, if we don't have that, like I said, we're located in Arlington, Texas. And you can reach us at Burton Academy. That is B-U-R-T-O-N, Burton Academy Dot org if you'd like to get more information about that, about that campus. Well, if you like, and I know I'm going off script, so I'm going to make you a little nervous. <laughs> so the other thing here, too, this is the <clears throat> epicenter of activity. So let's also talk about For what's sure. happened here in the last month. So last night, last night, we had Dude Perfect released the show that occurred here that they actually Dude Perfect, filmed. millions of YouTube followers. Happened here. That was released. On top of that, we had alumni that was here last week. Yep. And that also speaks to the hard work, not only for the people behind the camera, but also the teachers here at Burton Adventist for sure. Academy. The amount of work that they put in is just absolutely amazing. An amazing, amazing weekend, yes. But this is the epicenter of activity right here in South Central Yeah, Arlington. they have absolutely come to the right place. So this network, Blast, the new network, has. this is not its first broadcast. No, correct. So last fall, tell you, our audience. You did it. Yeah, so I last fall, 
absolutely. Bradley mm. Colvin was here. You were here holding down these chairs right at this very moment. And it was a marathon broadcast where we went through all of North Texas, all the different academies that they were here doing the Spelling Bee. And it was a big success. I know you gained quite a bit of followers on uh, Twitter because of that actual <laughs> event. So, I mean, I, once again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sitting next to a Brad Co broadcast Lynchin. Really, I broadcast am. That, so I, I'm just honored to be next to you. Well, here. the spelling bee was great. We are glad to be back for this Eclipse event. This is going to be so much fun tomorrow. I'm so much, so very much looking forward to that. And speaking of Mr. Bradley Colvin, I am pleased that he is again joining us as our third co-host with our man-on-the-street sort of interviews. He's going to be doing some, some Jay Leno-style jaywalking events going on. He is located outside, and we do have a camera out there. I think we're headed out to him. Uh, Bradley, how you doing out there? Wow, I am doing <coughs> wonderful, Adrian. Uh, it's great you to look, be here. You look great. You, know, you look amazing. I'm, I'm just so thrilled to be part of the Blast group, you know, <laughs> the Burton live stream team. Uh, apparently, you and I had too much fun during the spelling bee because, you know, they had to separate us for this event. Right, right. Now we're, <laughs> we're, we're not allowed to sit together anymore. Yeah. So before you take off there, I want to sure. let everybody know that Mr. Colvin is the head of our English department yes. uh, here at Burton Academy. And Mr. Colvin, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I am also an alum of Burton. Uh, I went here for 13 years, class of 09. <clears throat> I was here alongside... Reggie last night uh, at, at the alumni event. It was awesome, had tons of games. If you have, if you graduated from Burton and you did not participate last night, you guys missed out. They missed it. And we Absolutely. really hope to see you there next year. Um, man, they, they had tons of different games, incredible food. And uh, yeah, so it was a blast. But uh, I'm, I'm, this is my ninth year of teaching, my first year back at Burton, and it feels good to be home. Well, welcome home. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And we see that you have a uh, partner out there with you. Yes, I do have a guest here. A you Mr. introduce him. Mr. <laughs> Jocelyn Cadet, how are you doing? I am well, thank you very much, Bradley. I am Jocelyn Cadet. I am the vice principal for high school here. This is my ninth year here at Burton, but my 17th year in education. Uh, my title is vice principal, but I think the most important titles for tomorrow will be science nerd and uh, astronomy <laughs> enthusiast. Yes, absolutely. I mean, yeah. You guys have not seen the behind the scenes that Mr. Cadet, Mr. Long, Reggie, Adrian, uh, we have tons of camera and sound crew that have just been helping out. And uh, this has been going on for months and months. Like whenever I first came here to Burton as a staff, I'm pretty sure the Solar Day was like part of our first meeting that we had. So there's been a lot of prep work. Um, Mr. Cadet, I'd like for you to kind of talk about what we're seeing back here as far as all these tables and chairs and what kind of uh, things can people expect whenever they arrive here tomorrow? Sure, absolutely. Now, although it might not look like much right now, um, but tomorrow this field is going to be completely full of people. I think we're expecting around 900 plus people on campus tomorrow for like about what two and a half to three hours. So a lot of people here, but all back here, we are going to have a lot of games, a lot of food. Uh, we'll have some telescopes set up for those who have not had a chance to see the sun. We have two very special telescopes I want to mention. We have a couple of uh, hydrogen filter telescopes, which actually allows you to see the atmosphere, like the surface of the sun and everything. So uh, so if you're watching and you have tickets, please show up. And, and one last thing, if you don't have tickets, I encourage you to just step outside, okay, and make sure you catch totality. Uh, we won't have another one in this area for 300 years, so make sure you catch it. That's right. And so, again, Mr. Cadet is, is telling you that this is a sold-out event. Uh, you know, as far as ticket, ticketing goes, we, we are fully out of tickets. And uh, so we're just really uh, happy to be here. Um, you know, I, I, I believe you guys received a view of the gym as well. And there's just going to be tons of booths. Um, a lot of the staff and students have worked really hard to put together a lot of fun-filled games. There's going to be incredible food and, and drinks. And so uh, as the senior sponsor, I definitely expect you guys to come out and support your seniors <laughs> as we uh, attempt to get them to Disney World this year, along with all of the other uh, grades as well. They, they've really been working hard. Absolutely. Um, you mentioned food, um, brisket tacos. Did yes. I say more? Oh. Right? We have yeah. some vegetarian tacos. Uh, quite a lot of different food that people have put together. And some of them were actually themed to the eclipse. Yes. Yeah. So if you want some, uh, if you want to play with some moon sand, you can. If you want to play some uh, um, asteroid dodgeball, you can come out and do that as well. Some uh, galactic slime. So a lot of fun things for the kids to enjoy that's themed to the event tomorrow. 
Well, that's wonderful. Uh, yeah, we're, we're just totally psyched to have everybody here. It's really quiet right now. I know tomorrow is going to be a completely different story. So whenever you tune into the live stream then, um, you're going to have to check it out. I'm going to be interviewing a lot of people uh, prior to the eclipse and then afterwards. And so uh, if you will not be here on campus, we still highly encourage you to come and check it out. Tune in. Check us out on Blast. There you That's go. Right. Thank you, Mr. Colvin, Thank Mr. You. Cadet. Reggie and I also, ladies and gentlemen, want to point out the enormous effort. I know that Mr. Colvin and Mr. Cadet just mentioned it, but the enormous effort that has put us in front of this camera. Yes. And, and we're looking at them right now. You guys can't see them, but I am very pleased to be looking at them. And I especially want to highlight Mr. Aaron Long right there in the middle. He is our development director here at Burton Academy, and he has put in so many hours, I mean, countless hours countless. that they are just well, countless. I mean, that, there's no, say, no other way no to more, say it. Right? Yeah. No other way to say it. So let everybody else know who else that uh, we have that's been supporting us. Yeah. So we have a lot of folks here. Like I'm not starting to lose count of how many people we got <laughs> behind the scenes here. But staff. I mean, so we have we have Orge Garaza. He's here running. We have Aaron. Uh, we already mentioned him. We have Vahe Martinson. We have Travis Simpson. We have Gil here running the yep, board here. Gil running the board. Good, good to see you. And then also Pastor Adi is going to be making an appearance here yep. later too and helping support all of this. So, there, I mean, there's too many people to mention. There is just so much that's gone into this. And I think you and I are just honored to be a part of this. Oh, I absolutely mean, so honored. The talent is incredible. I mean, we, we sit here and run the Yammerer. But it, just before we went on air, we were just looking. It's like amazed at all the effort that was going into this. Ladies and gentlemen, you have definitely come to the right place. And, and specifically, we want our audience to know that when we refer to His Majesty... That is Mr. Aaron Long, because sometimes we're going to be getting directions in here, maybe in the eye, saying, no, I'm sorry, you're off track. You need to go here. That segment is over. But uh, that will be, His Majesty will be giving us those kind of directions. So, Reggie, I can tell you were very excited I am. about tomorrow's eclipse. We've had plenty of meetings of this. I loved hearing Mr. Cadet's excitement. I was going to say, that exceeds mine. Yeah. I, th I think I would have to admit that his, his excitement exceeded mine. I'm going to try to match his excitement. But, but go ahead. let the audience know some of the things you're looking forward to, specifically related to the eclipse event sure. that, that we're going to see. Well, I mean, let's start first with the fact that last fall in October, it wasn't a total eclipse. It was an annular eclipse. Okay. You and I, we've only seen partial eclipse. But tomorrow is going to be a total eclipse. And what's amazing about this, and some of the videos that this team has put together, absolutely amazing. Some of the, the experts, the scientists, you can learn a lot. And I'm going to pull a fact from one of those. And actually, I believe it was from Emily, Emily Steele. Okay. Yeah, Ms. Emily Steele. The fact that the sun or the moon, the difference in size, the moon is 400 times smaller mm. than the sun. But because of the way our creator has placed it, it is perfectly aligned to actually provide this total eclipse that we're going to be able to witness. Wow. The other thing, too, is the fact that this is the only place in the solar system where you can see on Earth a complete total solar eclipse. It happens other planets, but not to the point of what you can see here on Earth. And that just once again speaks to our Lord and Savior and how he's designed this masterfully. It's intelligent design. There's no question about that. Yeah, uh, so that's yeah. what I'm looking forward to. In addition to, hey, we're so close on the cloud cover, which we're going to talk about the weather. In the we moment. are coming to that in a little bit. But uh, thank you, Reggie. We, ladies and gentlemen, as I mentioned earlier, we're so excited for tomorrow's eclipse. I'm glad to hear those facts from Reggie. And uh, we're very much hoping that you'll choose to join us here tomorrow, here on Blast. So now we want to share with you ways that you can tangibly Yes. Join us. So not just watching, and, and, and some people, you know, they're out of town, they can't get a ticket, or the tickets are sold out, and they weren't it's able to get it. It's on a wait list right now. So they're, yeah, yeah. so they're going to be watching, but it's not just watching. You at home can join us and be part of the broadcast tomorrow. Reggie, tell them some of the ways that they can participate. Well, it all starts with Solar Day 24 at BurtonAcademy.org. Okay, let's say that again. That's Solar, Solar Day, Day 24, 24, like the year, okay. That's right, BurtonAcademy.org. Okay. So because, once again, you're not going to be able to see this everywhere. Because we're doing YouTube, a live stream, you're going to be able to participate. You're going to be able to comment. You're going to be able to post your, your videos, your photos. You're going to be able to message Adrian, the man behind the <laughs> mic. He's going to be able to comment on your comments. It's going to be a lot of fun. That's where we're starting to unleash So somebody the fun. who has a student here Correct. could send in a picture of that student. Absolutely. Or... Perhaps a faculty member's family could send us a picture and, and then we can make comments and, or even ask questions? Absolutely. Ask, okay. ask questions. The other thing, too, is we're going to be looking because we have the man on the street, man of the people, Bradley, out there interviewing. There's going to be a lot of opportunity for people to get FaceTime, to have airtime on YouTube. Now, 
who knows how many people are going to be watching, but you're going to have that opportunity <laughs> to be on TV because we're going to have over 900 people, as you heard Jocelyn State here earlier. I mean, this is an exciting day, and there's a lot of participation, and I'm going to say it again. We're going to unleash some fun tomorrow. There's, this is definitely going to be the place to be. So in addition to that, we're going to have some great guests here. Let, I'm going to tell the audience some of the, the guests. We're going to talk a little bit more about them tonight, and then we'll see their interviews tomorrow. But Dr. Timothy Standish. Yes. Um, he is a senior scientist at the Geoscience Research Institute. We're also going to have Miss Ellen Thomas, the principal of Burton Adventist Academy. We're very excited to talk to her, so you'll get to meet Miss Thomas. Dr. Keisha Norris, who uh, is the superintendent of the Texas Conference, all of the schools. So Miss Thomas is the principal of Burton Academy. And then Dr. Keisha Norris is the superintendent of all the schools in the Texas Conference. We'll have them describe to you a little more about what that means and how the Adventist education system is set up. And then also Pastor Kevin Wells, the head pastor of the Arlington Seventh-day Adventist Church, which is the church associated with Burton Adventist Academy. He's going to be joining us for an interview tomorrow as well. Many others will be joining us, and if you're already connected here in the church school family and you're watching us, if you're local or even if you're connected by having a relation who attends here or uh, is associated with the church community, you can, uh, as Reggie said, send to uh, your pictures and questions to solarday24 at burtonacademy.org. All right, now, ladies and gentlemen, the part of the show that I have been most looking forward to for months we have been setting up. Reggie, I think you are about to give us the forecast for tomorrow for months. We have been anticipating this, waiting with bated breath. Can we see this eclipse? Are we going to be precluded? We're so nervous. Let us know what we have in store, Reggie. Well, great. I, I'm telling you what, I'm excited to be here. And let me tell you, we're going to be looking, look at this satellite image. I could sit here and look at this all day. Let's just start with some of the things we're looking at. You're actually witnessing the nightfall happen. You're actually witnessing the fact, these are, this is cold air coming off the continent, cumulus clouds right here. That's what you're seeing. In addition to that, look what else we're going to be seeing here. You're seeing the streaming moisture coming up from the Pacific. These are the cirrus clouds that we're going to have to contend with tomorrow. And the fact that why people are so nervous on what we're going to see. That is what you're seeing here with this continental U.S. satellite image, which I am just beside myself, the fact that I get to stand next to the satellite and bring you this information. Let's go to Texas, though, the great state of Texas. Let's see what it's looking like here. Once again, close-up image. Here we go. Burton Adventist Academy, South Central Arlington, right here, smack in the middle of North Texas. Once again, you can see that moisture plume that is coming up out of the southwest from the Pacific. These are the cirrus clouds that we're worrying about. I'm also just going to move slightly off the screen. You can see the actual dimension here. The cirrus clouds, high-level clouds, you can actually see the cumulus clouds beneath them bubbling up along the Texas coast. Right here, the piney woods of Texas. There you go, Mr. Solomon. I'm talking about Burton geography that you taught me back in 7th and 8th grade. I'm going to slide over here. We're going to point out the Balcones escarpment. We're going to talk about the Edwards Plateau. All of this is going to come into play tomorrow with this weather. We're having too much fun. Let's go to the next image here. We're going to pull this next up. Now, we're going to talk about a weather terminology called the thickness. All right, and this is going to come into play because tomorrow we have to talk about the moisture that's coming up out of the Gulf. It's starting because we have a trough, an upper level trough that's coming out of the Pacific across the western U.S. and it's pulling up that Gulf moisture. As you can see here, that's what that image is showing you as it comes up. Look at that. It's going to be serious moisture. Let me tell you the other thing. Right now, as you step outside, the dew point is 30 degrees. What does that mean? It would take the temperature to drop to 30 degrees before you'd have fog or 100% humidity. That's how dry it is out there. In the next 12 hours, the moisture from the Gulf, as you see here, is going to be surging, surging out of the Gulf into North Texas, and that's going to be the culprit that's going to be bringing those clouds and potentially low-level clouds. Now, I mentioned the thickness. Here it is right here. You notice the black lines that I'm talking about right here, the black lines. These are the isobars. This is the equal pressure, okay, and you can see that. But the thickness is the actual red, the red lines here that you see. These are the red lines. It's telling you what the temperature is of the air and the thickness and the denseness, basically from 15,000 feet all the way down to the surface. What you'll notice as I step back is that warm air is surging, once again, surging out of the Gulf, and that's going to set the stage for some very complex weather as we go into the afternoon and ultimately into the evening. Let's then go to the next slide here. All right, 
here is the animation, <laughs> hard for me to say, of the actual temperatures. Once again, I'm going to mention the fact that we are dealing with 30 degree dew point. The temperature is going to drop like a rock when the, when the sun goes down tonight. It's going to get down to 54 degrees, 51 degrees actually here in south central Arlington as the temperature drops, as this next animation loops. You'll see the actual low temperature. There it is, 51 degrees here in south central Arlington. It's going to heat up fast. As soon as that sun comes up tomorrow, we're going to heat it up. But what's going to happen as that surge of golf moisture comes back, it's going, to, it's going to retard the heating of the air because now we're going to have to deal with cloud cover, the cirrus clouds, and ultimately the cumulus clouds. And then we're going to be topping out in the 70s and 80s. That's what we're looking at tomorrow. Let's go to the next slide. All right, here's what everybody's worried about, the cloud forecast. We're equal opportunity here. This is coming from the GFS model. Before I was showing you the NAM, here's the GFS. What you can see here, very clear, Dallas-Fort Worth right on the fringe. It is, it is touch and go tomorrow. I'm hopeful, fingers are crossed, that we're gonna have a break at the time of 140 totality. But we're gonna have to watch it very closely. I'm gonna tell you though, for folks south of the I-20 corridor, it's not looking good. Johnson County, southward, Austin, San Antonio, not looking good. But we're on the fringe of some potential good viewing. The other good news is the models are trending in a positive direction with the fact that we're not gonna have to deal with high cirrus clouds anymore. It's gonna be much thinner than what we were originally anticipating just 24 hours ago. So that is good news. Things are setting up, fingers are crossed. The models are showing that we're trending in the right direction on the cloud forecast. Let's go to the next slide here, and I'm going to move on this way. I love this graphic. Now, we've got to talk about the magic that Aaron worked out here. Look at that, cirrus clouds. We even got gauges to tell you what's going on. So the cirrus clouds I mentioned before, high-level clouds. These are ice crystals, the wispy clouds. We can contend with this. We can see the solar eclipse if it happens through here. Alto cumulus, good news here. We don't have to deal with this. Mid-level clouds, we don't have to deal with this. Once again, that gauge tells you it's not great because we're talking worse conditions. Now, I'll further back up. Right here, cumulus, this is the big ticket item. What's gonna happen tomorrow with these cumulus clouds? Because this is that low level moisture that's surging out of the Gulf. We're gonna have to watch this closely. Once again, Burton and South Central Arlington, I-20 quarter, right on the fringe. The good news, the further north you go of Dallas-Fort Worth, you're in a much better position to see some really good viewing areas. All right, let's go to the next slide here. All right, so now here's the actual rundown, hour by hour forecast. Bang up job on these graphics. Once again, 65, 65 here when we start out at 9 a.m. Then 10 a.m. as we're getting closer to the event, it's heating up like I talked about, but the air is becoming more humid. Now, it levels out like I talked about. We have a break. I'm being optimistic with this forecast here at 12 p.m. because I'm going to say there's clouds breaking. And then 1 p.m., 80 degrees. It's, it's hot. It's, this is actually above normal tomorrow. 80 degrees. We're contending with clouds at the time of totality at 140. And then 2 p.m., it could get interesting after that. But that's what you see here with our hour-by-hour -hour forecast here at South Central Arlington at Burton Adventist Academy. Let's go to the next slide. All right, here's the actual graphic on totality. Now, you'll notice what we're showcasing here from the lowest point, which is down here, which is the areas here of Keene, which is the holy city west of Jerusalem. As you continue then to the north, all the way up to North Dallas, 60 miles is what separates these schools. And you can see generally from a perspective, when you look here, this is going to happen very quickly at 1.40 a.m. or 1.40 p.m., excuse me. But you can see the overall totality is going to move very quickly across these schools. So we have our friends there uh, in Joshua, which is Jams. We have three, Burleson. We have four, which is Fort Worth. And then we have five right here at Burton Advis Academy. Now, as we move over this way, <laughs> let's get it right. We go this direction. You can see here's Dallas, sunny south side of Dallas at Southwest Advance Junior Academy. D d then you got Dallas Christian Academy and you got Garland and then you also have North Dallas right above my head there. That's all the schools that are going to be tuning in and potentially doing their own thing tomorrow when it comes to this solar event. Let's go to the next slide because now we're going to broaden the view. We're going to broaden the view and see the whole area of all of totality across North America. You can see all the schools. We've got 12 of them listed here. We got the fact that we got South Texas Christian Academy all the way down here. They're not in the path of totality, but they are going to be tuning in tomorrow. So we welcome you all when you're going to be viewing tomorrow. Now, you see how this then progresses up through the Hoosier State here of Indiana. We also then have Dayton, Ohio. And from there, we also go all the way up to Buffalo, to Canada. We, we cover North America here at Burton Advanced Academy. Let's go to the next slide. And we're going to bring a few other additional forecast measures here. So San Antonio... This is another spot that's going to be watching us, another academy tomorrow. Unfortunately, I'm going to say that's the worst spot to watch this eclipse, unfortunately. Central Texas, not great. Oklahoma, we have some friends in Oklahoma that are going to be watching at the southeast corner. You all are actually in a great spot, great weather tomorrow to see this. Little Rock, we have an academy in Little Rock that will be watching. 
Another great spot to see the viewing of this because we're only really going to be about 30% of the, of the sky covered with clouds. As you keep going back here, Indianapolis, the Hoosier State again, 40% coverage of clouds, another fairly good viewing. And then we get to Dayton, Springville, Spring, Spring Valley. We're talking about that academy there in Ohio. <laughs> we're we're going to say they're doing okay, but the problem is it's going to be decreasing clouds and it's touch and go for them. And then ultimately in Canada, that is where I'm going to step back and you can see that. That, for friends in Canada, that's 8 degrees Celsius, 47 degrees. Half of the sky could be dealing with clouds, but generally another good viewing area. Now, that brings us to a close. Let's go to the last set of slides here. This is, this is the NAM again. And the reason I'm bringing this up, this is very important tomorrow. We're going to have to deal with severe weather. This is a setup that we have not seen all year long, and I'm saying it's going to put it to a point that we're going to have to deal with large hail, we're going to have to deal with tornadoes, we're going to have to be very mindful, and we're going to have to keep the eyes to the sky tomorrow. So you, what this is showing is we have an access of instability that's going to be moving up of the, out of the Gulf again. Once again, I'm mentioning that surge of moisture out of the Gulf of Mexico that's coming, and we're going to have to deal with that tomorrow. But the good news is we're not really going to be looking at this until the evening as we get to 4 to 6 o'clock a.m. or p.m., excuse me. The other thing that this is showing, now this is not an exact location of where the thunderstorms are going to be, but what it's showcasing is the fact that we're going to have to deal with discrete supercells, and that's where we're going to have some problems because we're dealing with large hail, and we're going to be dealing with tornadoes. When you have discrete supercells that are forming like this on a very wide instability axis, you're going to have problems. Let's go to the final graphic here, the last graphic, my favorite graphic. Channel 8 doesn't have a graphic like this. This is what I'm talking about. Look at this, the hail. We got, once again, let me, let me back it up here. The hail right here. That is going to be big time. We're talking ping pong size ball to potential tennis and baseball size. Tornadoes, once again, the best, I would say, conditions we've had all spring for tornadoes. Heavy rain, flooding, then we have damaging winds. And now you can see the timing here that we're going to have to be very mindful of. We have a short window after the eclipse that we're going to have to be very careful and mindful of getting home so you can be in a secure structure when potentially bad weather is going to be hitting. Ultimately, as we get to the evening, 6 to 8 p.m., widespread coverage that you're going to have to be aware of with these thunderstorms, and then overnight, more severe storms. Ultimately, what I want to be bringing home to everybody here is the fact that this is going to be a multi-day event that we're going to have to be dealing with severe weather, and potentially, potentially, we could be looking at three to five inches of rain here in North Texas as we go out throughout the week. Now, ideally, as we get into Thursday and Friday, the weather clears out, and we're in a much better spot. So big, big news tomorrow eyes to the sky, pay attention, and be weather aware, my friends. With that, Adrian, why don't you step on in here and let's right. do some more. So I am very encouraged by that forecast because we've been nervous that there would be so much cloud cover. And I don't know if we can go back to one of the graphics that you had earlier um, with the cloud cover. It was somewhere in the middle. That one, exactly. Oh, the so models, okay. The yes. models. So just to make sure I'm understanding, as we see right you're doing a great job. There. All right. This is my first time on the green screen. I am <laughs> I mean, not going to be natural. nearly you're as deaf as you. You're a natural. I mean, you're but a natural. But right there, if we can go. Now, the blue area, is that the clear view? That's the clear. Okay. That's the so clear. we want to be in the blue area Correct. and not in the white area. Correct. I know those are technical weather terms, blue area, white area. But that's what I'm seeing. And if we run that model through right there, we are right on the, on the, edge, on the edge, like you said. That's touch what I'm and saying. Go. It's it, touch we, and go tomorrow. It could be very close. We could get some real good sky and have very clear to see, or we could be a little more like Antonio. So yes. we're hoping for the good sky, we're which is better best. than we had two days ago. Exactly. So thank you. Thank you very much, Reggie, for that. So we're going to go to a shot now so we can tell our viewers. There we go. There, there we is go. our campus. We see it right there. Burton well, Adventist you are Academy. You are a natural. Look at this. Yes, look. And then and we're going to go up here. The Arlington Seventh day Adventist Church. So those are the two things that we want to focus on. Tomorrow is Event, Correct. And we are going to be full, so we want to make sure that everybody understands how, when they come here, where are they going to come in off of I-20 coming down Kelly Elliott, and then what are they going to expect at the gate? Right. So when you get to the gate, it's very important, you're going to need to pull up your, I, your QR code, because ultimately that's what's going to get scanned, and as you pull into the gate here, right back there at, at Burton Adventist Academy, there right we go, you're closer there. to it, you point to that's it. That's it. Right at the there. gate, you're going to be greeted by greeters that are going to scan the code, once it's guaranteed or that it's clear that you have a ticket, you've registered, they will then hand you wristbands that you'll have to wear. Okay, they have to wear the wrist, wristband to wear them the all day time. to make sure that they're, that they're a, part a welcome of this guest. Event. Okay. And in addition, there is security here. So we do have police officers that will be here to put everybody's mind at ease with 900 people. We do have security here that will be manning uh, okay. the whole grounds. So I see that there's you know, parking here on our campus, and then we're going to go to this field, Correct. what we call the north field. That's going to be where the, where we put the cars 
additional first, parking. Right. But I'm guessing that both of those are going to fill up. So if they come here and there's no parking, where should people then, go? Then we go to the Arlington Adventist Church. To right the church. Here. Exactly. Okay. We go here. That's where the shuttles will be. Now, we do need to make mention the shuttles will not be running between 1 and 2 p.m., obviously because of the event and the totality. So they need to get there at least before 1 p.m. to get on the to last shuttle. To get on the campus to get so here. The, the drivers can also see Correct. the eclipse. Now, here's Perryman Field right here. This is where we up at so you want to bring your lawn and chairs. that's where we saw mr colvin and mr cadet exactly. right in that area that's where you're going to be setting up that's where we're going to be viewing everything and i believe that's potentially where we're going to have some of those telescopes that cadet was talking about. okay yeah and that'll be exciting to see that's going to be some so the arlington stuff. church everybody is located at 4409 pleasant view drive in arlington texas so burton adventist academy here on kelly elliott road and then if you need a, the additional parking that's 4409 pleasant view road correct in arlington all right so those who are going to be here, let's go back to that view again. You saw the better view. Sorry. Oh, they they, they surprised okay. me. I, yeah. His Majesty. Has Keeping it, you on your he's toes. He's got it ready. So tell our viewers, I'm going to step off screen and you let people know some of the things that they're going to be enjoying tomorrow and I will get out of the way. <laughs> and almost fall down. But I mean, he's very agile and that did not happen. So the good news is we got a lot happening tomorrow. A lot of booths. We have a lot of activities. You heard Mr. Cadet talk about that earlier. We have a lot. Of, we have a game truck that's going to be showing up tomorrow. We have a dunking booth. We have basketball. We have ring toss. We have tons of different things that, as you participate, this is not just a fair. This is a carnival type atmosphere of fun that you're going to have. Once again, unleashing the fun here on Perryman Field tomorrow when we're going to have all the activity. For that we have to talk about the fact that another great thing, and, and Mr. Cadet references, is the food. We're great food tomorrow. I want to make mention that I can't wait for the horchata as a drink. we got many different kinds of drinks. Even a Shirley Temple can be had here at Burden Adventist Academy. And then in addition to that, we're going to have some corn street tacos, brisket. We do also want to make mention the fact that we have the protein substitute. So there's good soybean substitute here for brisket if that you so choose to go that direction. But we got a lot of food. we got a lot of games and fun as you can see here. It's going to be a great time and I can hardly contain myself, and I know Adrian is extremely excited about it. So with that, Adrian, I'm going to toss it back to you, and let's finish this up. Okay, wow, that does sound like a lot of fun, Reggie. And, and we're going to be, uh, you and I are going to be stuck <laughs> here in the studio. No, no, we're not going to be stuck. But that sounds like a lot of fun. A, a game truck, a dunking booth. A dunking booth. Oh, that sounds great. It's great. Well, a lot of fun for those who are here. But for those of you who will be joining us in the broadcast, we are also going to have fun. So there's going to be a lot of learning. I mentioned the guests, a lot of learning, Eclipse facts, the, everything Eclipse that is here. But we are also going to have some fun here on set. There's going to be an interactive game, I'm told. Kahoot. It's going to be Kahoot. So let's talk about that. That's, once again, unleashing the fun and unlocking knowledge. Knowledge. Because that's a great collaborative event. And, and that, you know, you, there's no graphic needed for Kahoot. Kahoot speaks for itself. The other thing too that I'm going to say is that CNN doesn't know how to spell Kahoot. So that's the thing. <laughs> you need to be here to witness Kahoot. And, and you and I are going to be, we're going to be running Kahoot. We're yep. going to be taking questions. We we're going to be giving the them questions. out. We have up to 400 spaces that, for participants to be a part of Kahoot. And we are going to attempt to, at least I'm going to answer them myself. And I'm pretty sure viewers at home, you'll do better than me. But that's no, that's, no, no. So, no, you, I know you're going you're gonna to hold your own. I have no, <laughs> no issue. This man, you don't understand this man. I mean, this is CTA education. The He's misplaced confidence is, is very welcome. Thank you. But at 1130 tomorrow morning, ladies and gentlemen, we want to tune in here. 1130 to blast. Same place you're at now. Same bat channel that you're on right now. We are going to go outside to Mr. Colvin because he's with Mr. Cadet. They're going to tell us even more about the well, and, game and some gonna, more. Because it's important that they realize that it's reference off the, the guide. Yes. That's been created. So they're going to tell you where to get the answers so that you will be prepared to win prizes and I won't say any more about that. They can tell you more about that, too. And what is going to go on with our... Mr. Colvin, you out there? We are out here, and I'm here with Mr. Cadet. And, uh, yes, there will uh, be this form that they can look at throughout uh, the event, and there's, there's tons of different activities, so I'm actually okay. going to kick and that, it. that form, is that the event guide? That, that is the event guide. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, so Mr. Cadet is going to tell you a little bit more about this guide. Absolutely. So the event guide... Uh, is on our, on our website, so just go to burdenacademy.org, uh, click on events, and then go to the Solar Day tab, uh, and scroll down and you'll find the event guide. Now, the event guide is your go-to for 
information for both of what's happening here and even if you're staying at home. So first, it goes over information for the live stream that's happening tomorrow. So this is only a foretaste, a precursor to the actual live stream tomorrow. So the event guide has information about all the guests that, that's on there. Um, the, the host as well. Um, Adrian, I don't, I don't believe we put your Twitter handle in it. I apologize. Um, <laughs> So, you know, it is what it is. But anyway, sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to make sure. This solar base sure. getting in the way yeah, of self-promotion. So yeah. you have all of that in there. Now, additionally, we have information about solar eclipses in general. It talks about the science of a solar eclipse. Now, uh, you heard Adrian mention uh, the, um, the game that we're going to be having. Now, the answer to all of those questions, which... I know who put it together. So I know the answer to all the questions are found in the guide. So make sure you go through the guide. So it goes over the science of a solar eclipse. So what's the difference between a total eclipse, an annular eclipse, and a partial eclipse? If you're not sure, go check out the guide. And I have a hint. You may want to know the answer to those questions. So that's there, too. In addition, let's, tomorrow is going to be an epic day. Um, once in a generation, maybe more than a generation, you go, you're going to want to capture this event. Um, by taking some pictures. If you're not sure how to take uh, pictures of the sun, photographs of the sun, check out the guide. It has information about how to use your cell phone to take pictures, how to take uh, pictures with a DSLR camera. It goes over all of that information. So a lot of good stuff in the guide. Additionally, if you're at home and you weren't able to get tickets to come over here, but you're looking for activities to do with your kids, check out the guide. There are some awesome crossword puzzles in there. We have multiple levels for elementary, kids in junior high. And if you're feeling like, hey, I'm Mr. Science, there's like a, a level that's up there for those individuals to challenge them as well. Um, so we have all that information in there. Now, there's some weather information in the guide, but I think the best source of weather is from our own weatherman. Uh, Reggie Herman. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, he's done a phenomenal job just in, in this pregame here. And uh, yeah, very knowledgeable. And yeah, CNN, you know, all these news networks, they don't have anything on him. The they Weather Channel. Ain't got uh, nothing on him. Right. So get <laughs> his phone number or something because that weather app just ain't cutting it. Um, <laughs> I, I did, before we cut away, I, I do want to encourage all the people that's tuning in right now. Uh, to actually send in those questions uh, for Adrian tomorrow, okay? Th th this is an interactive experience, Absolutely. and uh, so we definitely want you guys uh, watching if you were not actually on campus for the event and participating as well. We have not forgotten about you, and so just uh, we want to let you know that we are anticipating those questions and for you guys to reach out. Mr. Cadet, do you have anything else before we move on? Absolutely. So just a few more seconds. If, if, if you're not planning on being at Burton or you're not sure where you're going to be, I highly encourage you for the five minutes of totality in your area, leave your job, leave your home, like whatever you need to do, go outside and make sure you don't miss it. Even if it's cloudy, day will turn into night. I don't know how to express, you know, how awesome this is and you cannot miss it. If you live in an area and you're not sure if you're in the path of totality, the event guide has a link that you can follow where you'll be able to identify where you are in the path of totality. So please make sure to check it out. And if you're joining us tomorrow, it's going to be an awesome day, and I can't wait to see you. All right, and I believe that's all we have out here on the street. It's been a blast, and uh, we, we look forward to uh, being out here on the field tomorrow. So I guess I'm going to kick it back to you guys, Reggie right. and Adrian. Well, thank you, Mr. Colvin. Thank you, Mr. Cadet. Um, all right. So study up, everybody. Go to that event guide because you can win prizes at the Kahoot game if you know the answers, which are all in there. Study up. All right, Reggie. So all this buildup, the weather, we're going to see it. I'm praying, I'm hoping, I'm confident in good weather. We're at tomorrow, 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. The event is upon us. We're going to look up directly into the sun. How are yes. we going to get away with that? Well, once again, at this event, we've provided these what solar do you have glasses. There? These solar are solar glasses. glasses. It right. almost looks like 3D solar glasses. So yeah, just go ahead and pick up one. Now, what's very important, you have to make sure, if you're going to do what Adrian's talking about looking at the sun, you have to make sure you have ISO 12312-2. That's the kind of detail that you have to make sure the glasses that you have. And luckily enough, Aaron Long and the team have made sure to provide you that. So we And have, we're going to be providing these for free And tomorrow. these are for free. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put these Obviously, Adrian's going to do a great job of demonstrating that. that so looks, stylish. It looks Let's great. See. 3D glasses on you. Now, 
have to make sure that you understand is when you have them on and you're not looking at the sun, you're not going to see anything. I can't see anything. You can't, you can't even see. I can't see your I eyes. I cannot. Now, what's great is when you look at the sun, these are filtered that you can look directly at the sun. At 1.40 and 141 p.m. Central Daylight Time that we were talking about earlier, you can actually take these off. And for three and a half minutes, you don't have to wear these because you can look at the sun. Now, as soon as totality is over with, you got to put these back on because the sun is so strong that it can burn your retinas. And that's what they talk yeah. about. You can burn your retinas or go blind. And the word, one thing we don't want you to have to see is the last thing that your eyes visually see as you burn your retinas is the sun because that's what will be with you for the rest of your life. We don't want that. We yeah. want you to use these. We're providing Wear you. the glasses. Wear the glasses. We cannot say this enough. And so we want to make sure that you see these glasses, wear them the right way. The other thing, too, is do not the, the film because these are uh, very specific. Your, your, your oil on your hands can actually oh, okay. take it. can mess it, it up. It can mess that up. So it's very important that you wear them the right way and you take care of them the right way. Gotcha. So very okay. important tomorrow that we and use And it's interesting that so there are what we would call non-name brand knockoff versions of these. These are not the same thing I get at a 3D theater. Correct. Okay. These Actual, are the real deal, yeah. absolute real deal that you got to make sure you have. Guys, wear your glasses. It is not worth it. You want to see this eclipse, you got to wear these. Exactly. All right. Well, Reggie, we talked earlier about some of the uh, guests that we're going to have on the show tomorrow and the interviews that have been done and some live interviews that will be done. We want to talk a little bit more about them as we're getting ready to wrap up our show. The first, Dr. Timothy Standish, he's going to be joining us from Australia. Is that correct? Well, when he did his interview, he was from Australia. Okay. So some of you might be able to actually see this. If you go online after the live stream as it wraps up here shortly, you'll be able to actually go online and watch the 41 minute video that's recorded of really great content that was put together. But we're gonna have him, he's actually, I believe, gonna be in California tomorrow. Okay, he's in California now. And so he's a little bit closer to our time zone. So we're gonna be able to ask him some more questions, have much more detailed conversations. So that's a great, great guest. In addition, we're gonna have recordings of the other interviews that you actually did, which I thought you did a great job. Yeah. I Pleased to sit down with uh, Dr. Jake Hebert mm -hmm. and Mrs. Emily Steele of the Institute for Creation Research, and they shared a lot of great content. And those uh, interviews will also be available to everybody online. I think they might actually be available now. They certainly they will be after this live stream. Mm -hmm. You can watch the uh, interview there the, in, in its totality, but then we're going to be showing a segment of that uh, tomorrow on our broadcast. And then also Mr. Jim Burr, who is and is, was a manufacturer of telescopes for NASA, in NASA. some cases. Yep. And uh, there we see all the guests we, we just talked about. Uh, Mr. Burr made telescopes and still goes around, even at the age of 87, which I was very impressed with, uh, and, and discusses astronomy and all of those kind of things. So he was very knowledgeable and something that was worth hearing. But most importantly, these are great. All four of those are great, knowledgeable people. Most importantly, Mr. Colvin alluded to it. Who else are we going to have on camera. Well, we have the students. The students. The students. I know that's what you're excited about. So we're going to interview students. We're going to interview people that are here tomorrow. Some of the plus people will be interviewed tomorrow. We'll, we'll have a lot of interaction. But then we have other people. And we have kids say the things, as some TV show once told me. So I'm right. very interested to see what live content we and Mr. Colvin is going to have to react to there. I'm sure it's broadcast. <laughs> Old. Yes, it will be. <laughs> Absolutely, it will be. So, and those of you who are not able to be here and have family members that are here, please tune in. You might see your kid. In fact, call them tonight. Tell them to get in line. Maybe they'll get on camera too and they can be interviewed. So, and in addition to that, I already mentioned, but some of the local celebrities that we have, tell us who we're going to be interviewing tomorrow. Yeah, so we do, to your point, we do have a lot of local celebrities. We have Miss, Mrs. Ellen Thomas, who's the principal of this finest educational institution, is going to be here. We're going to be interviewing her. Uh, we have Dr. Keisha Norris, as you mentioned earlier. We're going to be interviewing her, get her perspective, understanding what all we're doing from an Adventist education and perspective. And she's a superintendent and of lots of Texas schools, yes. and since it's going across the whole state, she's got a lot of responsibilities. She's got a lot we're of lucky to have her here with us. Absolutely. Uh, then we also have, I believe, uh, the president of the conference. Yes, that's true. I uh, did not mention him before. Yeah, we have to mention him. We're going to have an opportunity to talk with him. Elton DeMorris. Elton yep. DeMorris. We'll have an opportunity to talk with him. We also then are going to have Pastor... Uh, Pastor Kevin, yes, he'll Pastor be making Kevin. a visit. And what's great about Pastor Kevin, because we talked about this earlier, this is a very focus on a Christian and, and creationist science-based event. And that's through the lens of a biblical perspective. And, and that's what Pastor Kevin's going to give us tomorrow. He's going to be breaking down Genesis 1, talking about how we can be looking at this. Because 
not only do we appreciate the science, but mm -hmm. there also is a biblical component of this. There's also a way for us to step back and just appreciate what God's going to allow Absolutely. for us to enjoy tomorrow. Yeah, what he's going to allow for us to enjoy. And it's not just something we're pumping out there to try to forward our worldview. The fact that God and science match up so well together and that tomorrow is going to help us understand that, to me, is just incredibly fascinating. Well, it's definitely going to be a star-studded cast Absolutely. for this stargazing event. And we want to make sure, again, we encourage all of you Join us here on Blast. All right, well, that is going to wrap it up for tonight's preview show. And we are going to ask you to join us here tomorrow. Any final thoughts, Reggie? Yeah, so once again, I'm going to say this, Adrian. We are really looking forward to tomorrow. There's a lot of fun that's going to be happening. We're going to unleash the fun. We're going to un unlock the knowledge. And most importantly, like we just talked about, through that biblical lens that we're going to provide, you're going to see the fact that this design of the universe, of the world that we are a part of, it's intelligent, it's intentional, and it's thoughtful. And we're going to be able to witness that tomorrow. And I can't wait to see that. And the adrenaline is going to be flowing tomorrow. Yeah, I don't know about you. Those are the exact words I had. I can't wait. Please join us. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you very much.